This cake I'm about to make you is super indulgent. It's a caramel mud cake, so it's thick, it's rich, and it is incredible. Now we need 300 grams of butter and it goes into a pot. And for that caramel molasses flavour, brown sugar. So two and a quarter cups of that goes into the pot with our butter. I'll turn the heat on to a low temperature. And now for some white chocolate, 250 grams of chocolate. I've just broken the chocolate up a little bit to make it easier to melt. And the last ingredient, 200 millilitres of milk, just so that melts nicely. And add a pinch of salt. Now, the pinch of salt is really going to bring out that caramel flavour, so add about half a teaspoon in there. Now, I want to melt this on a very low heat so it thickens up nicely and all these flavours combine together. Just mix it here and there to ensure that that butter separates and that chocolate doesn't clump up. Now, while that's melting, we can get on to a few other little things. We'll crack some eggs, so I need three eggs for this recipe. We'll break them in a separate bowl. One, two, and three. And I'll add a little bit of vanilla extract. If you like, you could use some vanilla bean. And then just with a whisk, break up those egg yolks and egg whites and mix it together. Now this goes into a delicious caramel sauce, but not until it cools down. So after this is cooked, I'm gonna place it in a large bowl and cool it down for about 15 to 20 minutes to room temperature. Now that the caramel sauce has cooled down, it's thickened a little bit and we can incorporate our three eggs with the vanilla. So pour that in and then with the whisk, just very gently combine that. Now this is a cake that cooks at a low temperature, 150 degrees for a while and that's why we're going to get that fudgy effect too. Now we need to incorporate some flours. So one and a half cups of plain flour that I'll measure out and sift in to the cake. And then along with that, one third of a cup of self-raising flour, just to help it lift a little bit. Now we'll just sift that in. And we won't use a whisk again, we'll just use a wooden spoon to gently fold this mixture in together. Now it's quite a wet mixture, so when you're preparing your tin, I've got a tin that's about six centimetres high, I've placed some baking paper inside and around the collar, and I've also added a little bit of foil on the outside of the tin. The reason I do this is because, again, it's cooking at a low temperature and this mixture is a little bit liquidy, so I don't want it to run everywhere. So this is just for some extra assurance. Now this cake is going to cook in the oven for about two to two and a half hours or until a skewer that's poked in the centre comes out clean. happy with this, it's come out of the oven, it's cooled completely. You can make a frosting with this if you like, but just make sure it's not too sweet. I think it's sweet enough as is, maybe just a little bit of icing to finish it off. And that cake is fantastic with a cup of Earl Grey tea. I'm going to cut into it because I want to show you how fudgy it is in the centre. That's a, a juzzy small portion, <laughs> it's actually quite large, but look at that. Isn't that spectacular? It's moist, it's thick, it is definitely fudgy. And it'd be rude not to have a taste of this incredible mud cake straight down the centre. Mm. <laughs> that is amazing. That's all I need to say. <laughs>